Hi Gunman guys and welcome to the second to last car review from the eight most recent vehicles that we had in of course the 1.32 patch in GT Sport and this one is a car that was very highly requested the Nissan Fair Lady Z, aka the 350Z of the Z33 shape in particular. Now, of course, a ton of people want the 370Z as well, along with a ton of other cars, obviously. But this one was, I would say, a fairly obvious choice to bring back. I was not at all surprised to see its silhouette, not at all surprised to see it return. Of course it was going to. I would say it was almost as certain as a Skyline coming back. They were not in the game from day one, but we knew it was going to be. Of course we were going to have Skylines, of course we were going to have a 350Z. As far as the 370Z, I do think we'll probably get that one as well, but I wouldn't say that one is as certain as this one was. Now, certain things with the Fair Lady Z are a given. Of course it's going to be a good drift car. Of course it's going to have less power, but also more weight than something like a, a Skyline or a Supra. It's not quite that level of vehicle, that level of performance car to begin with at least, but it does make a great rival for stuff like the Hyundai Genesis. So it's this much more modern take, almost like a, a USDM rather than a JDM vehicle. It's got that American twist of it's a bit heavier, it's got a bit more of a, a focus on the interior amenities with the tech, the accessories, a little bit more luxury you could say as well. Stuff that the Supra, the RX-7 has to some degree, but it's not really as much of the, the car's DNA. Now with the 350Z, it gives you a ton to work with. The engine of course is not quite as hardcore as something like a Supra or a Skyline, but it still has a ton of tuning potential. It's a three and a half litre, six cylinder, 310 horsepower to begin with. So it's certainly not lacking 264 pound feet of torque, which for a naturally aspirated engine, which is one major difference between the Fair Lady and the Skyline, that's good. That's a good level of spec to have. Now, as far as the weight, it is reasonable. It's not ridiculously heavy. It doesn't have all-wheel drive, though, so it would be surprising if it was as heavy as something like a Skyline. It weighs 1,480 kilos. That's pretty good. You can work with that. The horsepower per ton is over 200, which is hot hatch level, if not above some hot hatches. So again, it gives you plenty to work with straight off the bat. And of course, the base class, because it has 310 horsepower, is quite comfortably in N300. Now, I mentioned in my overarching review for the 1.32 patch, back when it first came out, that I thought this would be one of those cars that you need to keep an eye on in sport mode races, in public lobbies, certainly around N200, N300, and in lobbies where it's kind of a mix of handling and speed as far as the track requirements go, because this has a ton of potential there, and also a ton of potential for a very good price. 36,000 credits is excellent value for a car that's as good as this one. Now, as far as how it actually performs, again, we already had this car. We've had it in a number of Gran Turismo games at this point. We had a ton of different versions. We had like three different versions of the Roadster, which had no differences between them. Just one was the EU, one was the Japan, one was the American, but they all looked virtually the same. They all performed the same. We even, I think, did a full episode of Pick of the Pack, where I broke down every single 350Z. If we didn't do that one, it was certainly one that I had planned. Now, as far as this one, it stands alone, and I personally prefer that. There is no reason to have more than one 350Z unless it's drastically different. And a lot of those were not drastically different, they were just needless filler, like a lot of the MX-5s were, and a lot of the S2000s, and a lot of the Skylines were. So having one of them, I think, is actually a good thing, because it's the full premium, it looks better, it sounds better, and it allows you to just know exactly which one you want, because there is only one, and you can buy it and get the most out of it, instead of buying all these different variations for 36 grand or whatever each, and then wasting a ton of money just to find out which one's the best. But in terms of how it does actually perform, it is front engine, rear wheel drive, as I alluded to earlier on. The weight distribution, the weight balance of the car allows you to drift pretty easily, to say the least. If anything, it's a little bit too playful for its own good sometimes, but I will say that the 350Z has always been very responsive to tuning. 
You can turn it into a good track car, a good drift car, a good street racer, a good straight line machine for its power even. So as an all-rounder, it gives you a lot. And again, for 36,000 credits, which is very, very cheap. In fact, even by JDM standards, that's cheap. That's a lot cheaper than an RX-7, than most of the Skylines, than the Supra. So it's very well placed. It's like a good, what, 10 grand at least cheaper than most of its main rivals. So it gives you a ton to work with. Not quite as cheap as the Hyundai Genesis, but it's in similar territory. In terms of how competitive it can be, well, I would recommend, as with a number of these vehicles, keeping the class modest to low in terms of racing online. Don't try to take on, like, N500 cars. I haven't fully tuned mine, so I'm not sure what the peak power is, but potentially even N600. Probably N500, though, I think is the limit for this one. Don't necessarily try to race at that level unless you can already see what the cars in the room are and that they're not, you know, Porsche GT3s, because you don't stand a chance. It's not that this is a bad car, it's just not that good. So in N300, potentially detuning it to N200, that's where you can get a ton of use out of it. And you can actually see the benefits of doing something like that, for instance, with my Hyundai Genesis Tune. It's one of the best N300 cars I've ever built, and it's brilliant for the price. Likewise, the 350Z has that kind of potential as well. And of course, it's also the subject of some great liveries. The Option Stream Z, the GT500 race cars, various others too. It's a great canvas to work from. It's a pleasant looking vehicle. It has workable handling. It's pretty beginner friendly, even as far as drifting goes. And it's very responsive to tuning. If you try to bring the car in line, it obeys you. It's not like a, you know, a Cobra or a TVR where it's constantly fighting back. It actually brings itself under control and responds to that tuning and to fettling very well. It becomes much more docile, much more calm, and a lot quicker, ultimately, through corners. So if you do decide to buy the 350Z, I mean, it's chump change, really. It's such an affordable car. Then you'll get some use out of it, potentially. I personally still prefer the Hyundai Genesis, and that's always going to be the case for me. But for those who like the Fair Lady, for those who like JDM, of course, it's going to be a great option. So that's it for this review overall. Of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews. I will be tuning this car probably next week sometime, possibly the week after. And that's it. So, of course, I'll see you next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.